everybody. I have a word for you today. I'm just going to wait for a few people to join us and um, just sit in this presence for a moment. Let Holy Spirit just begin to rest, begin to you just begin to still yourself and let Holy Spirit. I really believe this word is going to be like, like a lifeline to people. Um, this is a specific word, so this might not be for everybody, but uh, this is something that's been, this is like, this is like a tiny part of a conversation, a big conversation I've had with God. And this is going to be something that is just going to grip a lot of hearts. I'm going to be super on, honest and vulnerable as well about a bit of my story today as well. Izzy, good to see you on here. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. If Holy Spirit gets on me on this bit and, and, and I go crazy, I just wanted to just give you guys a, a warning because this is something that's been burning in my spirit for many years. Julie, good to see you. Emily, Amanda, our Grow family, if you're joining as well. Laurie, I'm just... Um, Wow, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. We welcome your presence. God, I don't want this to just to be more words, God. I don't want this to grip the heart of a generation, God. I want this to grip the heart of a generation, God. I want this to grip the heart of a generation, God. You know, this is an hour of permission. This is an hour of the Holy Spirit is saying you have permission. You have permission to arise and shine. You have permission to arise and shine. You have permission to arise and shine, the Lord is saying in this hour. It's the Isaiah 60 of the Lord saying, the crazy, the wacky, the ones with all the different expressions and the different way that God, the, the blueprints God's placed inside of you. This is the hour. God's saying, arise and shine with them. Arise and shine. Stop trying to get permission from man when God's given you permission. Shura bande. Because we're constantly comparing, we're constantly looking, we're constantly trying to measure what we carry according to culture and to the church culture and to what's acceptable. And the Lord is saying, no, I don't want you to look at those things, will you? Will you constantly feast? on the throne room in my presence and my glory and you will live by a different standard you will live by a different standard and you will legislate from a different place you will release from a different place so god we just welcome your holy spirit we welcome you every single person watching this god that this word is for if you grip their hearts that this wouldn't just be information but it'll be transformation god there'll be power released god There'll be people that will be commissioned. There'll be people, Lord God, who will catch what you're wanting to say for this hour, God. And I, I just want to say this for those who are going to watch this and re, watch this on the replay, whether on Facebook or on YouTube, God is calling you. It doesn't matter if you are in a church or you're not in a church. It doesn't matter what you believe, God. This is what it says. The Holy Spirit, He searches through the earth. He's searching through the earth looking for those who are faith. He's looking for those who are saying yes. He's looking, he's looking and he's searching. He's looking and he's searching and he's just, he's, his eyes are on you. His eyes are on you. This is, the, this is the Joel 2 season of the Spirit of God being poured out in the earth. The pouring out of the Holy Spirit on the earth. I tell you what, the fruit of that's going to look crazy. The fruit of that's not going to look all neat. It's not going to look like you can manage it. You can have an admin team and, and, a, and a team of, of people trying to, you know, in your church organization. It will not be enough to catch the outpouring and the harvest that is coming. But God is starting with you right now. He's calling you out of that place. And I'm going to speak to those who are emerging from the wilderness. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a specific people. I'm talking about a people that have been maybe living on the fringe in this past season. Or maybe you've been, and this, is, this is not an anti-church thing. This is not even a church thing. This is, I'm talking to believers. I'm talking about people that carry the spirit of God, who love Jesus, who know that they've been created, and that they've been created, designed to love God. And there's been a season you've been in of isolation and wilderness, and you've been in a place Place of preparation and you've been you've been in this place you've been trying to navigate what that looks like and you know this is your season of emerging this is your season that God is leading you into something this is for you today God has been telling me for years now to look to the wilderness 
for the weighty voices from the Lord, the weighty voice of the Lord for the season we're stepping into. And that's not to that's not to, to devalue those who God has been birthed and training in the church. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about those who've been through the fire in the wilderness, those who've been through a season that has been so intense you thought that you were going to die, a season of assassination, a season of such opposition, or a season where everything came against you, yet you're still standing. God said, they are the ones who carry my weighty voice. They're the ones who carry a word of the Lord for this hour. And I want to explain why it's so important. First, I want to share my story, and I've not shared this properly on Facebook Live before, but I want to share this with you because I've had pastors and leaders, many like prominent leaders tell me, do not tell this story because it, it, it may make people anti-church. Well, it, it, this to me is not an anti-church story. This is simply my story, and I'm going to tell it to you guys right now. All right? We were a part of a church many, many, many years ago. I believe this is important. I'm telling you this because I believe this is important. So it's going to give, it's going to bring freedom to hearts of people who've walked through the same thing, but have been afraid to speak about it and then wondering, was that you really God? And all those kinds of questions. So we were a part of a church and it was, it, God just grew this ministry and we loved it. We're a part of this amazing church ministry and it's still an amazing church ministry. But God told us to leave. God told us to leave at some point and it wasn't, Anything personal, God told us to leave. And we're in a time where the, where the prophetic was really being drawn out of us. I was a worship pastor and God was drawing me out of that season and he was wanting me to speak. And I didn't even know if I could articulate or speak. I didn't even know. I didn't have that. I didn't even know I had that in me. And God was drawing it on me. And Christy went through, a, Christy went through depression. And we're... We're, this parallel this season is we're both frustrated, we're both disappointed. God, like we're we're not trying to be ungrateful. Rowing, we're in a church community, and you know we're we're happy about that. But there's something that was missing. We didn't understand what it was, and 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 Christy was going through this intense battle of depression, this identity crisis, and it was ridiculous. And what is going on? It, it looked like our home was falling apart. It was chaotic. It was messy. And in the middle of that, God said, "I want you. I I don't, I don't want you." this is the end of a season for you. And we thought, well, maybe we're going to leave from one church to another, but God didn't tell us to do that. God didn't tell us to go to another church. And so for three and a half years, we didn't go, we weren't committed in a church. I've been, I, man, I'm just feeling that, that thing, but the religious spirit wants to just say, hey, Nate, don't, don't tell this because this is going to, ruffle feathers, this is going to get pastors writing into you and telling you you're out of line. Well, I'm not trying to be out of line and this is no dishonor or disrespect, but this is my story. Okay. This is my story. And so for three and a half years, God wouldn't let us go. We, 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 for six months after that, I felt like I was disowned by God. I felt like, like I'm not going to church on a Sunday. I'm not doing the Christian life. And I need to move on from this bit because this is not about an empty church. I'm just telling you my my process. And every single time we try to go, um, we felt yucky or dirty like God was saying, no, I, that's not what I told you to do. And it was really, really hard for us. But after about a year of that, after about a year of, of being in that season, it began to make sense why God had us in that season. It's because he was... He needed everything cut off from us to be able to birth what was inside of us. Okay? I'm not telling you to leave a church today. I'm not telling you to do any of those kinds of things. I'm telling you that you've been in a season that God's been birthing what's inside of you. And maybe you don't understand the isolation. Maybe you don't understand why there's been even levels of rejection. Maybe you don't even know why people have been valuing your voice. Maybe you don't even know why there's been all these different elements that have been, uh, that have been painful. God's been preparing you as a voice emerging from the wilderness to speak, to prepare the way of the Lord and to speak forth what's from his heart. And I'm just, I just been, many people in this season, even like right now, it's not that you've left a church, but it feels like that you've stepped down from something and you know something's coming, you just don't know what it is. I'm telling you, God's preparing you where everything around you feels like it's being cut off around you. Every, every single relationship and tie, you're like, God, oh, what is going on? He's preparing you. He's preparing you. And many years later, God, he, he led us back into church. Okay? So we're not into church. I just want to make that so clear. But that season was so necessary and so needed. 
Prophets do need a home. Prophets do need a church. People do need a home. People do need a church, regardless of where you function or what you operate in. But you can't negate that there are seasons we go through that we don't understand why we go through them. We don't understand why they're so painful. We don't understand why God would lead you into a situation that looks like is recession. It looks like it is subtraction in your life, but it's not. It's the addition. God often develops and births people in the wilderness. You know, you think of John. You think of, of John the baptizer. His ministry was a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. He wasn't in the synagogues. He was a voice crying in the wilderness. And he was the one who then, wow, Jesus said of John, he said, John is the greatest of the prophets. But even you, even you are greater than he. Because John was the ending of an era. And John, as he baptized Jesus, there was a tag in the spirit as one ministry ended and another began. Wow. And what happened? That moment that Jesus had Holy Spirit come down upon him. and said, this is my son, my love, and I'm well pleased. Jesus then went into what? He went into his wilderness. Go read it. He went into his wilderness. His ministry didn't begin until that wilderness season. His ministry didn't begin until right there. Here he was in the wilderness, going through all these thoughts and bombardment of the enemy of temptations. Come on, turn the rock in a turn this stone into bread. Kept behind me, Satan. It is written. And I believe we go through these wilderness seasons because God's wanting the pure voices to arise and to emerge. I'm telling you, Bible college is powerful. The seminary is powerful, but don't let it become your cemetery. Don't let it become the place that you die because you're not willing to, to be in a place that is just you and the Lord, that surrender, that deep place of the that deep place of surrender where you feel like that you're giving up everything for him to come and live inside of you, for him to come and take up residence in you, where you say, It's no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. That's what the wilderness does. This is what Isaiah 43 5 prophesies of John. A voice cries out in the desert, clear away for the Lord. Make a straight highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised and every mountain and hill will be lowered. Steep places will be made level. Rough places will be made smooth. Then the Lord's glory will be revealed and all the people will see it. The Lord has spoken. And that's the ministry of those, the prophetic voices, those who are coming and emerging from the wilderness. And they'll emerge out of that place, out of that place that they thought that they died in. They'll emerge out of that place, bursting with more life and more transformation and more Holy Spirit power and breakthrough than they ever thought possible. That the very fragrance of their season of death will be actually the ignition of a ministry of reconciliation and life. And I'm speaking to those who've been in that wilderness. I'm speaking to those who've been living on the fringes. I'm speaking to the sons and daughters that have felt like that they have no place in the kingdom or in the church. And today God's calling you back. He's calling you into the family of of God. He's calling you to belong. He's calling you to be a voice. He's calling you to resound he, His glory into the earth. He's calling you to arise and to shine. I think sometimes we, we keep looking at the wrong places for the weighty voice of the Lord. I think we're, we're constantly looking for those who are refined and we're constantly looking for this, you know, this voice that has it all together. But God's looking for the ones that are rough around the edges that will simply be a container for his glory to pour in and leak out in the earth. We're going to see a different blueprint. We're going to see a different kind of voice arise in this season. We're going to see something arise we've not seen that will fulfill the earth. That will be a solution to what the earth is crying out for. We're going to see prophets and people sent into places, that you know, into situations and social situations that are very messy. That the church doesn't want to deal with. We're going to see people sent into the area of abortion. We're going to see people sent into sex trafficking. We're going to see these voices released into the LGBT community to love on them. We're going to see all these things happen. I'm telling you, this is the earth. This is the church's time to arrive. This is the body of Christ's time to emerge. 
I want to tell you, what, do, what, what does the wilderness do? Or maybe I should say, what has the wilderness done in you? I want to tell you what it's done. The wilderness cultivates intimacy. It's just you and him alone. It's just you and him alone. There's nothing else. There's, 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 it feels like death because you're like, I'm used to calling someone up and venting, but I've got no one. I got no one. And you go through this season like, I don't know who to call until, you know what, the only one on the end of the line is Jesus. The only one on the end of the line is the Father. It's where you get to know the Father really well. And you're not dependent on a spiritual Father. Earthly Fathers are good, but a terrible and disappointing replacement for the Father. And the Father saying, the wilderness is the place that you met me. The wilderness is the place you begin to hear my voice like a sheep knows my voice. And then you know what I sound like. And then you know what to speak. And you know what to say because you're beginning to what? You're beginning to speak forth what I've already spoken into your spirit and release that into the earth. It's where you fight your hardest battles. It's where the warfare is the most intense. It's where you go through the mind wars and the things that come against you like Jesus did. Like Jesus did. He came against those mind battles and those wars. But it's the place that you see victory. It's the place that you defeat the bears and the lions like David and you emerge victorious. So that when you you meet your Goliath, it's not even a match for you because God's already been pouring out that authority. He's already showed you who you are. This is something that is really powerful. The wilderness season is really powerful because it is the place that you'll know your promotion comes from the Lord and not by man's hands. What happened to David? Out of all David's brothers, when prophet Samuel came along and said, the next king of Israel comes from your, your family, your lineage, right? And he's like, it's none of these. Is there anyone else? And they, they had to call forth David from the, from the wilderness, from the, from the tending to the sheep. What happened? It wasn't man that promoted David. It was God. And when you've been faithful, even in that season, when you've been faithful, even in that season, right? The promotion comes from the Lord. You don't need to chase down doors. And I believe a marker of this season of this generation is we're not going to seek fame or influence. We're not going to seek fortune. We're not going to seek networking connections and all those sorts of things. You're not seek. Young ministers, you're not going to seek out event invites and churches who are going to get you to come along. You'll simply just allow God to bring those things to you. Let the promotion come from the Lord. Let the promotion come from the Lord. The marker of these people is they do not need to look for promotion. They don't need to, they don't need to be these incredible self-marketers because God does it for them. The very fruit of their life is what, is what people are drawn to because they know that the Spirit of God is upon their life. This is the next thing. No one can say they own you. They weren't there. <laughs> they weren't there. They weren't there in the middle of your, your night of your dark night of the soul. They weren't there in that place, were they? No, they weren't. They weren't there when you needed someone to call on. No, it was only Jesus. They can't own you. They can't put their brand on you, their mark on you. They can't claim you. This is my spiritual son. This is my spiritual daughter. No. I'm not against that stuff, but I'm telling you, there's been some really bad really bad messy stuff that comes with that that is just not good and it has caused a lot of people to be squashed and controlled instead of freedom released and i'll tell you something prophetic voices do need accountability and they do need people that they can they can draw from and people that can speak into their lives but i tell you what's going to shut down a prophetic voice the tell you what's going to shut down it's going to be somebody who tries to own you put their brand on you so i've made you that straight away will weaken the prophetic voice and, and unction it will it will, it will murky it and muddy the, the very thing that's meant to come forth pure. Okay, what has the wilderness been doing? It's been healing and freeing you. It's been healing and freeing you. You don't even realize the wilderness has been doing way more for you than you realize. It's worked for you. It's like it's, it's working in your favor, man. It's like it's, it's, been, it's been doing some deep, it's been doing some deep deconstruction and construction. Okay, next thing, he's been redirecting you. There's a new wine skin. Maybe the thing when you went, walked into the wilderness with, God's taken that from you and he's given you a wine, whole new wine skin and then he's been filling you up with the new wine of his presence. <laughs> wow. And you come out of the wilderness gushing forth with that new wine. People go, I've not heard that before. What, what, why, why does that just sound like life to me? Why is that just like... A refreshing water to my soul hearing that. Why? Because it's the new wine. It's fresh. It's new. 
It's not tainted. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Next thing. God's been honing your instrument or your, your unique expression. I've been saying this a lot, but there is, there is about, there's about to become, and it's already happening, the emerging of, of such crazy out there expressions of God's kingdom that's going to absolutely just bless the world, but it's going to be different than what we expect. The package is going to come in, it's going to be very different to what we expect. People are going to, you know, we've, we've, well, it's almost like we have seen, well, this is what the kingdom is and this is what it can release. And it's this tiny, this is tiny area here, you know, a prophet looks like this, an evangelist looks like this. But I'm telling you right now, the emerging voices that are coming from the wilderness in this season, they're going to be, there, there is such a, there's such a new vocabulary that they carry. There's such a new even way and method that they carry that's, you know, that, that they operate in. And unless you, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. But um, unless you, unless you are tapped into the spirit, you will write off who they are and what they carry. Okay. So God's wanting to hone that expression that's inside of you. He's wanting you to own it. He's wanting you to pick up the very thing that's in your hands. He's called to give you in the wilderness. What was it for David? It was like, it was that sling. Like people are like, why would you use a sling? I've got a sword. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, it's a soul said, here, here's the armor. He's like, I, I can't do it with that. That's old. I can't do, that's what, I, that's what I used to do before this season. Now I can't do that anymore. I need my sling now. Well, that looks stupid. And we're going to look at that sling and we go, that's stupid. Why would that person do that? But it is the new sound, Florence. It is the new sound that God's bringing is carrying throughout the earth. And as that sling, it is a new sound that's released. And if you're listening to the spirit, you'll tap into that place and you'll value it. Thank you, Jesus. Joanne, good to see you. Bless you guys in Hobart, the Huon Valley. And um, God sends you back. The crazy thing is this. God doesn't take you out of situations so that you can rebel. He takes you out so that you can then come back with an answer and with a solution and that you can actually be part of family. This is so important because in this season, we're going to see the family of God unite like more than ever before. This is not a season of disjointing and more denominational isms. This is going to be a season of the unity of the body of Christ. What's worked against the body of Christ more than anything else is us getting in our own little groups. I'm a prophetic voice. I'm this and I need to separate from this person, this person, because they don't operate like me. No, we need to work together. And it's time that the emerging voices come out of the wilderness so that the body of Christ can come together and be a family. So important. So important you hear that as well. For those who are on here, Trying to, trying to correct me for what I said earlier about my story. But anyway, um, all right. So as I was, as I was <laughs> this morning, I was like, this was not in my heart to share it all. Like, God, you told me, you know, you get on there and you, you know me, I just share what he tells me. I just got to do it. I don't, I don't I'm not going to back out of this at all. And he told me to get on and share this because there are people and I'm going to have this conversation a lot and I'm going to get on here and I'm going to share this kind of thing a lot. Um, I'm releasing, Christy and I are launching Emerging Voices Collective in about a month and a bit now. We've just kind of delayed it a bit because there's a bunch of things God's speaking to us about. I'll share about that in a minute. But I'm going to be saying this thing a lot because there are a lot of people on social media who, who, who need to be called home. There are a lot of people on social media who maybe don't go to church and you've been out on the fringe and you've been in those places or you don't even realize what you carry. And so I'm speaking to you more than anybody else. I'm speaking to you right now. Yes, I've been there, but that's not the end of the story. And this is the word of knowledge God gave me this morning, and he told me to prophesy it. Stories from the wilderness about to be written in this season. Stories from the wilderness are about to be written in this season. You're going to come out with a song, but the Lord says that even stories, there are going to be books that are going to be written from the wilderness. There are stories that are going to be written from the wilderness. Wow, if, if, if that, you felt that in your spirit just then, this, is for, this might not be for everybody, but this is for a few people. You like the shirt pillar? Our good friends, our good ch uh, friends from our church make these. It's a Christian church uh, brand. Go check it out. Pillar T-shirts. I'll put the link up. But this is it. If you just felt that just then when I said um, when I said about the stories from the wilderness about to be written, who and you felt that you felt like, wow, my story needs to be written. It's going to empower and encourage so many people. Just put a heart up on the screen. I want to pray for you right now. I felt like the Lord saying that story, your story, your story is about to be written. And the Lord's saying that you're, there, are, there are storytellers that are rising up in this season. 
They're storytellers, the Lord said to me just before I got on the live and I wrote it down. Yeah, it's the Lord right now. Sure, I'm Yeah, release the story. Release that story. Release that story, God. I just heard in the spirit, but it's too dark. It's too painful, God. It's too deep. I don't want to relive that. And the Lord's saying, you're not going to relive it. You're going to see my victory. You're going to see my power and my redemption and my glory. If you've been through the season, you've been through the wilderness, you've been through the deep, dark valley of the shadow of death, but you've come out the other side and maybe you still don't feel whole, but God speaks of you are whole. And your voice needs to be heard in this season. I just break off every single lie, every single condemnation of the enemy, every voice that's trying to stunt you, oppress you, hold you, control you, limit you, edit you, be broken in the name of Jesus. On behalf of leaders and people, that never saw what was in you, I'm sorry. On behalf of parents, family members, and friends that are only trying to tell you, shut up, you're crazy. I'm sorry. Just release forgiveness to them even right now because you're gonna merge. You're gonna merge. It's a new day. You gotta brush off. You can't let your story stay in that place that you were the hurt, that you were the ones that people broke. You know, I tell you, you prophets, you can't stay there. You can't be broken orphan prophets anymore. Okay, it was your story, but let it be the part of the story that sets people free, not leads people to the wilderness into brokenness. Let it be the part of your story that makes people realize, wow, that's where I'm at, but I'm going to get free because they did. Sure, Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And God, I thank you. I thank you, God, for the stories that will be written. For those, Lord God, even right now, that anointing that's been released to write their stories, to write what you're doing in them. God, in the season that you're telling people, pick up your pain. Begin to release what I give you, the revelation I give you. It's time. You're like, but who will listen to me? God said, this is the hour. This is the hour. I want you to begin to piece together. I want you to learn what it is again to steward my voice and what I speak Maybe you're on here and you're a prophetic voice and maybe you read the words I write or other prophetic voices. You're like, I got the same thing. Good. Same Holy Spirit speaking to you. But now it's time for you to release. I'm not telling you to go and create an online ministry. I'm just telling you, begin to steward the word of the Lord. Begin to steward what he's saying in you. Go and encourage your neighbor. Go and release the word of God over people. Thank you, Jesus, that we're emerging out of that place. God, that the preparation season that many have been through is over. And then, God, you're leading them into a place of being able to, wow, be solutionists and architects of a world that you want to see. God, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. There's people being healed right now in their bodies. I just kept seeing, like, um, iron deficiency. Iron deficiency being healed. God's putting, wow, just sure. Oh, oh! bodies that have been restored from the seas of the wilderness, God. Bodies, physical bodies that you're healing even right now, God. Physical bodies, immune systems. God's rebooting the immune systems. There's a fresh strength, 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 strength over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Wow, God. Wow, Holy Spirit. Wow, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, release your fire over bodies in Jesus' name. Your fire over bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Your fire over bodies in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not sure this is, this is strange, but I, I kept seeing somebody in their hair. Well, there you go. Be healed in Jesus' name, Shannon. Be healed of that in the name of Jesus. Come on, your iron levels to come up in Jesus' name. Um, I just saw somebody who had hair that was almost like thinning. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you're a male or a female, but I, I felt like it was actually, there was a, a lady on here as well. It was like some kind of deficiency in your body. And the Lord said, I'm healing that even right now. 
hair's gonna grow back on your head. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a creative miracle. It's not just gonna be like, it's gonna suddenly, like I feel like it's a creative miracle. Creative miracle, check your head. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over every deficiency. Every deficiency, wow. Every deficiency in body, in people's, in people's blood, in their organs, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed, even strength. People feel strength come upon their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Every body part missing or lacking, I just I don't know I'm seeing this as well. Be healed in Jesus' name. Someone's kidney, kidneys be restored in Jesus' name. So one kidney, it's like one kidney, not both. Like kidney be restored in Jesus' name. Right now, kidney be restored in the name of Jesus. Be restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wow. Yeah, we command that pain. Go in the name of Jesus. Shoulder and arm pain. Leave. Jesus' name. But I feel like there were some people who come on the broadcast and you felt so. There are some people who came on who felt almost tormented by the enemy, like it's like something that was a war against your mind, like a witchcraft thing. That's lifted already. You need to give God some praise right now. Seriously, who's that? Who felt like tormented by the enemy? Like there was a, there was a there was a uh, witchcraft. You felt like there was something going on against your mind and you felt like this ang ridiculous panic or anxiety. Who's that? Yeah. Just, just let us know. Just check yourself now. You're going to be like, that's gone. I don't have that anymore. Wow. In his presence. In his presence. Janet, I just, I just decree this is your healing moment in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Well, Lord, I thank you, Father, for the, for the new kidney. I thank you, Lord, for Kat, the strength she's feeling come upon her. Um, every single time, look at that. Can you, I'm not sure if you can see it on here. Look at that. Every time I'm praying for healing, I just get like this massive, massive burning in here. Wow, thank you, Lord. Whew. Holy Spirit, you're so powerful. You're so mighty. Lord, I thank you for Carsten and Mandy. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for your people. Just love upon them. So yeah, um, we are launching Emerging Voices Collective. I'm going to pray for a few more people, but I just want to share this. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, we, we're so excited about this because this is not just, a, it's not a course, any of those kinds of things. This is beyond that. This is, this is a, a movement. This is, my goodness, I've just been so burning with this for a long time. I don't even know how to be, talk about it, but it's a prophetic community. <sighs> Commission with a purpose to create healthy, a healthy, safe place. Look, I'm not going to read from here. I'm just going to tell you it's a family for emerging voices. For, well, everything I've just been sharing about on here, it's a family for those people who want a safe place to navigate their calling, to know how to, 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 um, to know how to, to walk in their calling powerfully. To have people around you that can champion you. It's so needed. So that's what God, that's what it is so put in our heart. So anyway, there'll be more about that. You can go to our Instagram page, Emerging Voices, hashtag. I should go to the at Emerging Voices Co. I'll put the link up. Alden, good to see you. And uh, you'll get the link there. Go and follow us there. We'll have a website up soon about it. And you'll know more about it there. But guys, I just bless you. If God did any healing in your body uh, or in your mind, uh, let us know. Sharice, what happened? What got healed? Let us know. I think you were the arms and shoulder pain, right? So thank you, Jesus. So good. Um, yes, you can follow Emerging Voices on Instagram. It's simply at Emerging Voices Co. And then you can follow the Instagram for now. Uh, there'll be more that we're um, going to release about that soon. We're going to have, you can join the email list for it, whatever. Um, you have the pain still in left shoulder and arm. Thank you, Lord. 100% healing in Jesus' mighty name over that shoulder in the name of Jesus. We also have our third season of Grow beginning in like, well, it's ages away now. Um, we're still in our second season, but you can go check that out as well. Um, does it have no Facebook link for Emerging Voices yet? We're starting off slow because I really want to, uh, this is not, like I said, it's not a course. So I'm trying to get people to um, just join and follow the Instagram for now. There'll be a lot more that happens over the next few weeks and you guys can join with that. It's going to be a really amazing way for you to empower other people. So um, they're amazing, 
prophetic ministries around the earth doing incredible equipping. And uh, the only, I think what our heart is, is simply family, simply family, create genuine family of people and prophetic voices. And that's what we're excited about. Anyway, guys, I bless you. Please share this and go on, go on, love on someone today. Go and find somebody who you know is uh, one of these emerging ones. Go and love on them. Speak destiny over their life. Yeah, it, it's so simple. You Okay, this is why I tell you something. You go, to a, you go to a shopping center, you go to a mall, you go to a coffee shop, I'm telling you, saved or unsaved, it doesn't matter. There are people that it is longing, they're craving to be validated and told, you know, hey, this is what God has for your life. It's the easiest thing you can do. Go find somebody. Unbelievers are even easier than Christians sometimes. Go and find somebody and say, this is what, this is what God says over your life. This is what God's doing. This is what he's going to use you in. Ask God to give you revelation on what they're called to do in their life. Awaken destiny in them. And I'm telling you, it's just going to bless them. It's going to begin to awaken in you what God's doing. Anyway, bless you guys. Have an amazing day.